Welcome back to Kung Fu Maintenance. Got a really noisy faucet here. Tough faucet. And what this usually is, it starts whistling and all that. Hear it? Anyway, it happens more with the hot water. I'll show you with the cold water. Not quite as much, right? But add the hot water, and it really starts whistling. So, what's going on? I showed in a couple other videos about when you have hot water taking a long time, a lot of times it's the aerator. As the aerator gets clogged up, uh, hot water makes things expand, so it makes those particles uh, expand a little bit, and they start sealing off the screen and the different openings in the aerator, and start making it whistle like that. So these are cheap enough, it's cheap enough to just change out the aerator, but if you, this one is a bathtub faucet, if you didn't have another aerator or you didn't want to buy another one, you can actually clean these out. Got a pair of channel locks, you may want to wrap some tape around the, the jaw of your channel locks to prevent the finish. But this one, I'm just going to turn it out. In theory, if it'll come out. gentle with it. Taking the time, no rush today. You can see it's been holding water. It actually had kind of a lot of water in there. So the aerator, it shapes the stream, but it also restricts the flow. And you'll find a lot of bathtubs actually don't even use an aerator. But you can see all the calcium mineral deposits, stuff built up. A lot of bathtubs don't use an aerator as you want the bathtub to be able to fill up a lot faster. Uh, you saw I had it open fully before. I'm going to go ahead and open it. Uh, the aerator will direct the stream. So if this doesn't work out, I can always pop out the center portion of the aerator and just use the direction deal. But this may spray a bit, so it'd go real slow when you turn it on because it might actually spray out of there. And you can see we have no more whistling demonstrating that our problem was definitely in our aerator. Now this bathtub would probably fill up faster without the aerator. But anyway, I wanted to show you how to clean these out if you wanted to clean it out. To clean it, I'm just going to drop it in some white vinegar. It's nothing too complicated here, but uh, we don't really need this rubber washer to be clean. That's pretty clean. And the outside metal portion, we may not want to leave that soaking. What works really good is either some white vinegar or some CLR. Uh, if you use CLR, don't put the metal portion in the CLR. The CLR start to eat through things metal. You don't want to leave it on there very long. What I'm going to do is just put mostly this portion in just a little bit of white vinegar in a glass. So that I'm limiting how much vinegar I'm using. Just let it soak in there. Just like that. That's all we need. Maybe 15 minutes, maybe a half an hour if something was more stubborn. Um, we can dip this portion in there if you wanted to. You can see all the crusty stuff in there, the screens. A lot of times we can just rinse these out. In the, area, in the water itself. This one has several screens that kind of mesh up together. You can kind of take them individually and rinse them out. And if we want to, we can pop them in the vinegar and just get a little swirl. Good idea to turn off the water so we're not wasting the water. Alright, give it a bit of a swirl there. And I've also got a, a brush here. This brush can work real good. 
And this is a good time if you're cleaning things to clean other things uh, with the vinegar. Yeah, shower heads or whatnot, it can work really good for that. That way we don't waste what we've got. So we can just use it to clean different things up. So I'll go ahead and pop out the, the metal portion and take a look in there. Already, already did its job. It's still a little green patina on the inner portion of this. I might leave it in there a little bit longer. Got a good scrubber here. But yeah, it's gonna take a little bit more there. And again, you could just buy a new aerator, but I'll show you how you can clean these up. Let this stuff soak for a good amount of time. And uh, got my brush just gonna clean it up now. It's been about a half hour, I think. And that should be all we need here. A little swirling. If you have other things to clean, you can use the vinegar for that. Just gonna be rinsing it off here. And it goes. Off. Yeah, the aerator helps in the way that the water splashes up too. Right now, as the water hits the ground, it's really splashing up pretty good. And this one's not going to clean up perfect, but as long as we get rid of our whistling, I'm not too concerned about it. Time for me to buy a new a new deal, and I'll uh, try to put a link in the description for the aerator, where you can get one of those. It's a good idea to pay attention to how the screens get assembled when you take this apart, and so it's a little bit particular in how these go in. I should have paid better attention to that myself. I actually didn't, so I'm going to have a little bit of fun arranging the screens and all. But this one, yeah. I've got the blue side all the way on the bottom. Seems like all these other screens were too small. They'll go right through the bottom, so. Like I said, I should have paid better attention to that. Something you can do for, for years. It's got like four screens in there. Yeah, it's probably time for me to buy a new one. Oh, and now I see why. Okay, this piece goes in first white piece and then you've got your screens and it's four screens I can review the video and look at it again I'm probably just gonna buy a new deal so I put two screens on the top side on, I should say on the bottom. Put two more. Okay, got all four of them in. And then this deal goes face up like that. And then, so the blue part goes face up. And we've got the gasket. Goes in there. So we're all ready. Assembled and then we just rotate it in. It doesn't need any Teflon tape or anything, it just gets rotated in. 
and then I'll use the channel locks just a little bit. It's got a flat portion to keep from marring the finish. So again, you can use some tape on the jaws to protect the finish if you wanted to. There we go. Let's see if we get rid of our noise. Definitely a nicer stream. It had a little bit of noise when it first turned on, but it seems really good now. Turn the noise. I can kind of continue to turn this to orient it where I want the stream. That looks really good right there. No more whistling, no more noise. Good to go. Water's nice and hot. Nice clean sound. It's done deal. All fixed. We are all set there. A quick search of my YouTube channel. You should be able to find a bunch of material that will be helpful to your maintenance needs and links to tools and parts used in the videos can be found in the descriptions below.